What is up? Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and to your well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, to help clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 26 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and acne and psoriasis and eczema and rosacea and digestive ailments and autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is always a healing system, a regenerating system, a renewing system. It is designed divinely to heal itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may say that's a miracle, this renewing system is really just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we want to help you. Our number today, 855-660-4261. If you have a success story you want to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 855-660-4261. If you have questions about the longevity products, the ones I take and the ones I recommend, 855-660-4261 is your number. Or you can head over to brightsideben.com and take a look at our shopping cart with all the longevity products and the longevity systems. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If you want to start a longevity business, make some money selling longevity products, which in truth sell themselves, especially the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Or if you just want to get your BTT or any of your longevity products at the wholesale price, click on the Join the Team link on the upper left-hand corner of the page at brightsideben.com. Or you can call the folks at 855-866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. The Brightside Ben phone team. Tell them you want to Join the team, and they'll give you the full scoop, or you can click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com. Okay, thanks so much for joining us once again on the Bright Side. We left off yesterday talking about cancer and tumor cell formation. In spite of all the confusion around the development of cancer, horrible, horrible, scary disease that we all live under the threat of, as it turns out, we actually do have a good idea about what exactly it is that causes a cell to become cancerous. It's called hypoxia or low oxygen. And if you've even listened to the bright side a tiny little bit, it's almost impossible for you not to hear about low oxygen or hypoxia. It truly is a major cause of breakdown, a major cause of inflammatory disease, a major cause of degeneration, a major cause of immune dysfunction, and as it turns out, low oxygen levels at a cell level, at the cell level, actually the cell membrane level, hypoxia or low oxygen, is associated with cancer. And if you think that's simplistic, if you think that's not possible, oh, my doctor didn't tell me about that. My oncologist who's poisoning me with chemotherapy he never said anything about oxygen and respiration and how cancer cells are anaerobic cells. My oncologist is a doctor and he never said that. Well, tell your oncologist or tell your doctor to go study Dr. Otto Warburg, Nobel laureate. Go have him go read the paper that was published in the journal Science in 1956 on the origin of cancer cells. In the paper, Dr. Warburg is pretty explicit about the formation of cancer and Dr. Warburg did a lot of research. In fact, Dr. War- Warburg was well known for his laboratory research that preceded his conclusions. Paraphrasing Dr. Warburg from the article that was published in Science, first cells suffocate, then they become cancerous. Quote, cancer cells originate from normal body cells in two phases. The first phase is the irreversible injuring of respiration. The irreversible injuring of respiration is followed as the second phase by a long struggle for existence by the injured cells to maintain their structure. From the book Cancer, Step Outside the Box, and by the way, if anybody is dealing with cancer or wants to know about cancer, has a friend with cancer, a family member, I am uh, sending out copies of this Cancer Step Outside the Book via PDF file. Shoot me an email and put on there, Step Outside, and the subject, put uh, Step Outside the Box, and I'll send you this, uh, oh, 
gosh, it's a 400 plus page book on cancer, cancer step outside the box. Anyway, quoting from page 84 in uh, the book Cancer Step Outside the Box, Dr. David, uh, Dr. David Gregg, quote, cancer does not cause cells to turn anaerobic, that is not breathe oxygen, but rather it is stabilized anaerobic respiration, meaning cells that do not breathe, uh, do not get energy from oxygen, it is stabilized anaerobic respiration that is, quote, the single cause that turns normal cells that depend on aerobic respiration into cancer cells. And that's from page 84 in Cancer Step Outside the Box, quoting David Gregg, MD, Dr. David Gregg. Uh, you can get more information off his website, chrysalis.net, K-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S, chrysalis.net. From the journal Molecular Cancer, January 2003, hypoxia, low levels of oxygen, that is, which, uh, which result in, quote, gene mutations, tumor angiogenesis as blood vessels flowing into tumors pro- uh, contribute to tumor progression. Tissue hypoxia is regarded as the central factor for tumor aggressiveness and metastases. Here's something else for you. You know, you always hear that something causes cancer, this or that causes cancer. You always hear causes cancer, right? Acrylamides cause cancer. Toxins cause cancer. Viruses cause cancer. Oh, here, cause cancer. Well, Dr. Warburg talks about this in the paper. He says, quote, just as there are many causes of black plague, heat, insects, rats, but only one co- common cause, the bacteria, there are many remote causes of cancer, tar, arsenic, UV rays, but there is only one common cause into which all causes of cancer merge, the irreversible injuring of respiration, unquote. This is so clear, people. The bottom line is cancer, or a cancer cell, is a cell that has been suffocated, a cell that has been robbed of oxygen for a prolonged period of time. And why is that? Because oxygen is like the blood of a cell. It's the nourishment of a cell. It's how a cell gets energy. The way we get energy from nutrients, a cell gets energy from oxygen. The way a blood delivers nutrients to the body, oxygen delivers electrical energy to a cell, electricity to a cell. And this is such good news because we are all, in a way, living under the sword of Damocles called cancer. Well, we never know when this thing is going to hit, but if you understand that a cancer cell is a cell that has been suffocated, robbed of oxygen, the solution becomes simple. Number one, make sure you're breathing. Make sure you're breathing deeply. Make sure you're oxygenating. Number two, make sure you're reducing anything that's going to exacerbate or cause inflammation at the cell level, so-called microinflammation. Microinflammation clogging up at the cell level can also rob a, a cell of oxygen, just like poor breathing techniques can do it. Make sure you're moving your body. Make sure you're improving detoxification. Make sure you're drinking lots of water. Make sure you're taking your mighty 90 nutrients. Make sure you're using antioxidants and phytonutrients, all of which all of which have been shown to support oxygenation of cells. It's not difficult. And folks, cancer takes a long time. For the most part, cancer takes a long time to develop. By the time somebody shows up with cancer, they've typically been abusing their bodies for years and decades. And for people to send emails, uh, for people to sell products and send emails for things that cure cancer or kill cancer cells is nasty business. It's rude and it's not fair. You don't kill cancer cells because cancer cells are your cells. Anything that kills a cancer cell is killing you. The way to take care of cancer is to take care of the environment that the cancer cell lives in. And this gets us into our electrical train of health. Maintaining oxygen delivery uh, service, maintaining oxygen delivery to a cell via the electric train of health is one of the most important things we could do, not just to prevent ourselves, uh, protect ourselves from getting cancer, but just to keep ourselves happy and healthy for the duration of our lives. We'll continue this discussion when we come back from our break. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 855-660-4261. 855-4261 is our number. We'll be... We're back. 
back on the Bright Side. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 855-660-4261 is our number. And uh, let's see. I think we got a couple lines open for you. 855-660-4261. Try to get on board early, and we'll try to get as many calls in as we can next segment. If you want to learn more about the Longevity products, you can head over to brightsideben.com and click on the Join the Team link or click on the shopping card, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Make sure you ask about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine Multivitamin Mineral Complex Powder that you add to water and drink. It's 50 bucks a canister. Loaded, absolutely packed with nutrition. Most folks will notice results in a couple of doses. Results like more energy, weight loss, appetite suppression, just general feeling better. And that's what a good nutritional supplement program can do for you. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine is not a complete nutritional supplement program, but it's a great way to get your body nutrients throughout the day. You want to sip on the BTT. If you've gotten diarrhea or loose stools from taking the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, make sure you're sipping on it, people, because the stuff is so packed with nutrients and so many of us have malabsorption issues that if you drink too much all at once, it's going to pass through your system, go right into your small and into your large intestine, absorb water, and you'll end up with loose stools. You're not going to get the benefit of the stuff. So sip on it all day long. It's not going to give you absolutely everything you need, but it's a great way to make sure that you keep yourself nutriated throughout the day and you'll find yourself snacking on foods much less and naturally losing weight and naturally eating less food without having to use willpower and without having to discipline yourself and force yourself to stay away from your favorite foods. Beyond Tangy Tangerine, check it out at brightsideben.com or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. All right, so continuing on with cancer. Cancer and uh, the electric train of health. Oxygenation for uh, through deep breathing techniques is the most important thing you could do. You can actually use hyperbaric oxygen chambers. That's where they put you in this chamber and drive force oxygen into you to help deal with cancer. Make sure you're using your antioxidants. You always want to balance out antioxidants with oxygen, as we've said so many times before. Oxygenation is kind of a dual-edged sword because oxygen is important for cells to to. to to get energy from. Oxygenation pulls electrical electrical energy into cells, but oxygen also has a toxic effect and a burning effect. And antioxidants are the way nature is set up to protect us from excess oxygen. So when you're practicing your deep breathing techniques, make sure you're using your vitamin C and vitamin E and phytonutrients and selenium and zinc, all of which can act to protect you from oxygen. Keeping inflammation under control is super important. If you're interested in driving oxygen through the oxygen through the electric train of health into a cell, inflammatory processes will act to blockade cells from oxygen delivery. I'm talking here micro inflammation. When we talk about inflammation at the cell level, I'm not talking about the big macro inflammation that you get when you break a bone or get a black eye. I'm talking about tiny micro inflammation, which eventually will build up and form macro inflammation. But I'm referring here to the kind of inflammation that builds up very, very slowly at the cell level. This kind of inflammation, for the most part, means a defensive response, an activated immune system, which in turn, again, for the most part, means foods that ignite the inflammatory fires. Surprise, surprise, another food connection. It's not so much that specific foods, quote, cause, unquote, cancer. It's that specific foods activate an inflammatory response, which leads to cell suffocation, which leads to deficiencies in oxygen, which then can turn a cell cancerous. Keeping fluids moving in the body is also important. Exercise, staying away from pro-inflammatory foods. Sugar is probably the most pro-inflammatory food. If you're interested in a food that, quote, causes, unquote, uh, cancer, you don't have to look much further than sugar, which we're all eating so much of, 60, 70 pounds per person per year, even more. Blood clotting, thick blood, thromboses, clogging up, coagulation, these are all big time risk factors for the formation of cancer, as you would expect, given the relationship of tumor formation to poor oxygenation of cells, which is a direct result of clotted, coagulated blood. In addition to avoiding sugars and inflammatory foods and processed foods, drinking more water can also help keep your blood flowing. Drinking veggie juices can help keep your blood flowing. 
drinking veggie juices will provide you with antioxidants and phytonutrients and vitamins and minerals in addition to the hydration from the water. Beyond Tangy Tangerine, another great source of anti-cancer nutrients. In fact, some of you have heard of the Clemson study that was uh, put out maybe about a month ago or so. Clemson University did a study on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and they found that, un not unexpectedly, if you know how these things work, that the nutrients in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, in fact, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine itself, killed cancer cells. Now, I'm not a big believer in killing cancer cells, but in a Petri dish, when you add nutrients, cancer can't survive. Cancer cells live in an environment of toxicity, in an environment of starvation, in an environment of suffocation. It is the environment that needs to be manipulated and controlled if you want to prevent or eliminate cancer, and even uh, reverse cancer as well. In the book, uh, uh, Cancer Outside the Box, Ty Bollinger, the author of the book, actually talks about re reversing cancer. Actually, you know what? It's not, it's not this book where he talks about reversing cancer. It's another book by Bob Beck where they, he talks about, Robert Beck, where he talks about reversing cancer. It's not called The Body Electric, which is Robert Beck's famous book. And I forgot the name of his second book. I'll tell you what it is when we come back from our next break. But in the book, he talks about literally reversing cancer, the reversibility of cancer. It's not me talking. It's Nobel, it's the, uh, uh, I believe, Nobel laureate. I'm pretty sure he won a Nobel Prize, Robert Beck, in his book, Not the Body Electric, the other book, which I'll tell you what it is uh, when we come back from our break. He actually talks about reversing cancer, reversing carcinomas, reversing the uh, cancer cells. So I'll tell you what that is when we come back from our break. Keeping the lymphatic system moving is also very important. The lymph system is connected to the blood system. They're basically one system, the lymph and the blood. The lymph is responsible for moving fatty nutrients and clearing out wastes and poisons. Clogs and congestions in this system are likely to set the stage for inflammation and block oxygen delivery for, uh, to cells. Lymphatic movement depends on muscular movement. Getting our butts out of our chairs and getting on a rebounder is one of the best things you could do to move your lymphatic system. Exercising, walking, taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Muscle contractions that are associated with deep breathing are one of the most important ways to make sure your lymph is moving. So Deep breathing techniques can not only help nourish cells via oxygenation, but also by helping the lymphatic fluids move along and helping keep lymph moving so that toxins can be dumped out of the body and preventing inflammation. And one of the all-time best ways to protect yourself from cancer and to reduce the likelihood of all degenerative, degenerative diseases and to slow down the aging process is to eat less food. Eating less food is super, is super important. Yesterday, we talked about a study from Duke, uh, a calorie restriction to treat cancer. This is off of the uh, website Medscape.com. Calorie restriction to treat cancer. The time is now, quoting Dr. Dr. Stephen Friedland from Duke University and the entire field of cancer research. There have only been a handful of studies of calorie restriction uh, as a cancer treatment. None of them were authorized. Now, according to Dr. Friedland, Duke University is going to be using cancer or calorie restriction to treat cancer. Ketogenic diets, fasting, calorie restriction, these are all strategies that you can use to decrease the likelihood of getting this horrible, horrible, horrible emperor of all maladies. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're Coming back with your phone calls on the bright side, 855-660-4261 is our number. All right, we are back on the bright side. The name of the book by Dr. Becker where he talks about uh, reversing cancer is called Cross Currents. Dr. Be Robert Becker was a medical doctor who pioneered electromedicine. Uh, the Body Electric is his classic book. and He was famous for pointing out the electrical conductivity issues associated with healing and regeneration and health and wellness. And in the book Cross Currents, which is not as well known as his book Body Electric, he talks about reversing cancer, cancer reversal. Uh, and uh, let's see, that's called Cross Currents. It's a little hard to find that book, Cross Currents. It's much easier to find the body electric. For you guys who want to get a copy of this paper on the origin of cancer cells that was published in February of 1956 by the famous Dr. Otto Warburg, 
and uh, it's pretty easy to read. Uh, it's still it's a scientific paper, so you need to have a little bit of uh, technical savvy. But if you're interested in uh, getting a copy of this paper, send me an email, Ben at ksco.com, and I'll send this out to you. And again, if anybody's interested in getting this book, Cancer, Step Outside the Box, uh, I will also send a copy, a PDF file uh, of the book as well. So shoot me an email, Ben at ksco.com. For you guys who sent me emails asking me questions, I am so sorry, but I get literally hundreds of emails a month, and I don't, I just don't have a way of of answering everybody. I want to answer as many people as I can, and I try to get back to you. And if you put your phone number on your emails, it's much easier for me to get a hold of you uh, and then answer your phone, too. Sometimes people don't answer their phones when I call, and, and then we end up playing phone tag, et cetera, et cetera. So send me an email if you want uh, a copy of this paper on the origin of cancer cells by Dr. Otto Warburg. If you want a copy of the book, Cancer Step Outside the Box. I think tomorrow or maybe the next day I'm going to go over some of the emails that I've gotten because I have gotten a few interesting ones that I think could help a lot of folks. And uh, if you sent me an email and I haven't answered you, you may want to tune in and see if I read your email, especially if you sent me one here in the last couple of weeks. Okay, let's see if there's anything else I want to tell you about. Uh, I think we'll hold off until tomorrow. We'll continue talking about this electrical train of health. I still want to tell you where the electricity itself comes from uh, on the electrical train of health. And then we'll talk about exactly how the Mighty 90, the uh, vitamins and minerals and amino acids and essential fatty acids that are so essential for health, how they fit into this whole picture this model that I'm calling the electric train of health. The train, is, once again, is electricity. The cars are all loaded with a little piece of electricity called electrons. The train itself is pulled. The engine of the train is pulled by, uh, the engine of the train is oxygen, which pulls this electrical energy into cells. But where the, electric, where the electricity itself comes from originally is very interesting. And the exact role, the relationship that vitamins, minerals, and, and uh, and essential fatty acids and essential amino acids, the Mighty 90, the exact role the Mighty 90 has in making sure this electrical train of health stays on track, a little clue for you, uh, is also very interesting, and we'll talk about that in the next couple of days. Time to hit our phones, 855 six. 4261 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Maryland and finish up with Ralph. We talked to Ralph yesterday. What's going on, buddy? How are you doing, Ben? Doing um, well. We were, talk- we were talking about uh, joint pain, okay. knee pain, um, but I also have it in the hips. And I wanted to add one other thing. Yeah. Um, I, I described how I got off of the glucogel and uh, the other nutrients, and my knees began to swell and become uh, deformed. Well, that kind of thing uh, is particularly in one leg and not in both legs uh, equally. So Now, are you saying after you take the glucogel, your legs swell up? No, when I took a break from telling uh, okay, 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 that, okay. Okay, and here's I've never the... experienced that before. Well, you're getting older, my friend. You know, I think you said you were 50s, 50 or 60? Yeah, yeah. Thank okay. You. Okay, well here's the here's the deal. Osteoporosis, degeneration of joints, arthritis, all of these things are the same basic breakdown. I got a I got a Facebook message today from somebody who wants to know about uh, eye about uh, eye degeneration. This gal asked me what causes eye uh, visual problems, the eye system to break down, and I said to her, it's it's degeneration. Muscles, the eye muscles are degenerating and and uh, also uh, uh, sometimes the macula inside the eyes degenerate. But I didn't say this, but I wanted to say this, that eye problems are like osteoporosis of the eye. And osteoporosis is like macular degeneration of the bone. Now, you know you've heard me say this before. I say it all the time. All these diseases are the same. All these degenerative diseases are the same basic thing going wrong. It's just happening in different parts of the body. So if your joints are degrading, breaking down, what's happening is is that you're not building up as fast as you're breaking down. And as we said yesterday, you're, you're net in the red. It's like a business that's in the red. And so what do you do? Well, you got you got to approach it from two directions. The first most important direction is to avoid anything that accelerates breakdown and that means pro inflammatory largely pro inflammatory foods certainly molds and toxins and all these other all these other uh, uh, pollutants that we interface with in our 21st century lifestyle don't help but the most important cause of degeneration or of going in the in the red breaking down faster and 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 with more intensity than we're building up is a result of pro inflammatory foods ralph i'm not going to tell you about 
supplements yet because the most important thing you could do is not, has nothing to do with supplements. It has to do with staying away from foods that exacerbate inflammation. And you'll be surprised at some of the foods that can do it. It could be spinach. It could be tomatoes. It could be potatoes. It could be peppers. It could be beans. It could be things that you think are really good foods for you. Certainly all grains can be pro-inflammatory. Until you eliminate anything that's pro-inflammatory, you're like spitting into the wind to try to treat it with glucosamine and with nutritional supplements, as important as those are. So step number one is eliminating problem foods. Now, if you have any digestive issues, that's, that can be a problem as well, and you need to figure out what's going on in the digestive system. I think I told you about digestive enzymes yesterday, and they're stupendously important for degenerative diseases and breakdown because, number one, they'll help you get nutrients out of your foods. They'll help, deal, help you deal with digestive issues. And number two, they have wonderful anti-inflammatory properties on their own. Get on the ultimate enzyme. People, if you are dealing with any kind of degenerative inflammatory disease, get on the ultimate enzymes. I don't know if it's the single most important supplement you could take, but it sure is right up there. And given how inexpensive those ultimate enzymes are, it's ridiculous to not get yourself on this product. When you're taking the ultimate enzymes, activate them with apple cider vinegar, take them with meals, and take them on an empty stomach. Glucosamine is tremendous. Wonderful. Not just because it provides you with the building blocks for joints, but it provides you with the building blocks for your digestive system too. Again, this is stupendous. And the glucogel caps, like the ultimate enzymes, are also inexpensive. Now, if you're using bone soup, you will get some of those nutrients from the cartilage, which is very similar to the glucosamine. You'll be able to get some of those nutrients from the cartilage into your system, and that also will help coat the digestive system if you have any digestive issues, and it will help you build joint tissue. Get on bone soup, get on the ultimate enzymes, get on the glucogel caps, make sure you're flooding your body with vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C not only is important on its own for helping build connective tissue and cartilage and help with joint pain, and it's anti-inflammatory, but vitamin C will activate glucosamine. Glucosamine and vitamin C work together. One, one important supplement that nobody ever talks about, hardly ever, anybody ever talks about when it comes to joint health, is protein. Your joints are largely composed of protein. Get yourself on a good protein supplement, especially a, a protein supplement that contains the amino acids glycine, lysine, and proline. Use eggs. Use whey protein. Tremendously helpful for knee joint pain and for helping build cartilage. And also, make sure you're using essential fatty acids. The combination of essential fatty acids and protein can be tremendously helpful for all joint issues, joint health issues. There's so much more. Hang tight, Ralph. A couple more things and we'll finish up and then uh, we'll take Hector and Barbara as well, and uh, let's see, who else do we have online? I think we have a couple lines open. 855-660-4261 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Ryan. I think it's Ryan. Ryan, you there, bro? Is it Ryan? Well, Ryan, right? Hello? I'm trying to think. I forgot this guy's name. Oh, Eric. Eric, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said Ryan. Eric, you there, bro? Who is yeah, it we're talking to? Yeah, hey, Ben, how are you? Uh, okay, good. Uh, you're the guy we're talking to about, uh, about joint health, right? Is that Eric? Uh, no, no, no. Where's that I, gentleman uh, we were called... talking to? What? Oh, it was Ralph, not Ryan. Is he... Did we lose Ralph? Just put, uh, put Ralph on, John. I'm sorry. I thought it was Ryan. Oh, Ralph went goodbye. Okay. Eric, hang tight because I want to finish up with Ralph real quick. Uh, vitamin C, essential fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6. Make sure you're digesting your food. Use the digestive enzymes. Use lecithin. Get on magnesium. It's unbelievably helpful for joints, as is the mineral calcium. Zinc is also important for joint health, 50 milligrams of zinc. It's very difficult for you to rebuild connective tissue without zinc. Uh, make sure you're using zinc picolinate. If you have any blood sugar issues, that's going to compromise your body's ability to absorb zinc. Diabetics, take note because zinc is very important for helping blood sugar control, and if your pancreas is messed up, you're not going to be able to absorb zinc as effectively. So if you're dealing with blood sugar issues and you have joint problems, please make sure that you're getting on 50 milligrams of zinc. Everybody should just make sure that they're on 50 milligrams of zinc. Sorry about the confusion, Ralph. Uh, that's my fault, and I apologize for that. Moving on, uh, Eric, what's going on, my man? Okay, so I wanted to ask you if you could continue from Friday. Um, you said, uh, hold on a second here. 
So on our next program, I'm going to tell you about a nutritional strategy that you can use on your own to help stabilize serotonin levels. I'm going to tell you about a very important hormone substance that comes directly from serotonin. That serotonin is truly a relaxation substance. It's truly okay, I got you. I got you. I don't think I talk that fast. I hope I don't. <laughs> Did you have me spe- speed it up there, Eric? High speed, yeah. <laughs> that was on high speed. Because I know I talk fast, but not that fast. That was a replay. That was a replay from a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a couple months ago. Uh, and the hormone I'm talking about is melatonin. Melatonin comes from tryptophan. It's very similar to serotonin. Serotonin and melatonin. Uh, melatonin is derived from serotonin, and serotonin in turn is derived from tryptophan. So the hormone I was talking about with me- is melatonin. Now, a lot of the point I was making is a lot of folks are under the misimpression, a lot of healthcare professionals are under the misimpression that, that serotonin is a relaxation hormone. It is not a relaxation hormone. It is a stress management hormone that helps you handle uh, stress, uh, and that's important, but it doesn't relax you. Melatonin is the relaxation hormone, and uh, melatonin is unreal important. I mean, it is just mind-blowing all the things that melatonin does in the body, even though uh, most folks will tell you, well, it helps you sleep. It does way more than that. It's anti-aging. It helps accelerate healing. It turns on the growth pro- growth and repair process. It's very important for digestive health. In fact, it may be more important for digestive wellness than anything else. It's been used to treat heartburn. You can use high doses of it. It fights cancer. It is just beyond belief how important melatonin is. You can buy it for three bucks a month. You can take nine milligrams of it a day for three for three dollars a month or so, something like that. Three or four bucks a month. It's crazy cheap, crazy effective. And that's what I was talking about. It comes from tryptophan, and it is related to serotonin. Serotonin is converted to melatonin uh, during night, uh, at night, and keeping yourself, getting, making sure that you uh, have enough time spent in the dark is very important for the production of melatonin. That's what I was talking about, Eric. Does that help you out, buddy? Uh, yeah. So you would take it before going to sleep? Absolutely, take it before. It'll, if you take it in the middle of the day, it'll make you make you a little bit too sleepy. So yeah, take it before you go to bed. You want to take about. That, uh, you said that will help digestion as well. It will help improve the digestive process. It's very process, important. Yeah. Yes, it will improve the digestive process. Google melatonin in the digestive system. You'll be amazed what you find out. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and qu- quick, quick side note: when um, when the blood sugar is uh, elevated. For example, after eating fruit and nuts in the morning right. in a smoothie and stuff, is it is it um, typical to have a in the solar plexus area to feel nausea? No, nausea? not typical. It's that's a sign that there's some kind of malabsorption going on. It's a good thing though that you're noticing it because you want to link that to foods and eliminate those foods. It's good that you're noticing that, but okay. it's not normal. Nuts can do it. Uh, nuts can uh, nuts can be a real big problem for digestion. Uh, nuts are very allergenic for a lot of folks, especially almonds, peanuts, which aren't really nuts, but peanuts, almonds, those can be very, very problematic. Cashews can be problems for some people, Brazil nuts for some people. you got to see how you do. And be careful with roasted nuts. You know, a lot of times you'll see these nuts roasted, or you'll see them even in health food stores. You'll see nuts that are kept in these clear bins. This is not a good idea because nuts are so rich in oils, and light is the enemy of oils. Oxygen is the enemy of oils, and heat is the enemy of oils. So make sure your nuts are in the, in the shell if possible, and uh, make sure that they're not roasted. That's the worst thing you can do to a nut is roasted. Uh, that you, act, you can actually create carcinogenic compounds in the, in the roasting process. Although there is actually some literature that talks about increasing the accessibility of nutrients with roasting, I would personally be staying away from any kind of roasted oils or roasted nuts or heated oils. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you so much for calling. All right, uh, let's see. John, help me out here, buddy. Who's next on the line? Hector in Texas. What's going on, buddy? What's going on, Brightside? How you doing? Not much. Hey, I just had a question about uh, post-meal and fasting blood sugar levels. I got a hold of a glucometer and we kind of been playing with it. Okay. What would you find out? So what, what number should I be looking for? Well, the ADA says 120 after two hours and fasting under 100 in the morning. That's, Is that uh That's good. Oh, yeah, that that's good. good. That's real good. That's awesome. That's, okay. that's What do you eat for breakfast? What do you eat when, when you're, it goes up to 120? What are you typically eating? Uh, I'm, I'm actually not even breaking 100. Oh, you're on the you're doing great, man. How old are you? Yeah. Uh, thirty nine. That's awesome, Hector. Have you been watching watching what you eat and taking care of yourself for a while? Yeah, yeah, for quite a bit. Generally, for breakfast, I'll have a cup of beans and four eggs with some spinach. Good job, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Good, good for yeah. you. Right on. All right. Cool. Good. I just wanted to see if uh, if you lined up with the ADA or not. With ADA. Yeah, American Diabetic Association. 
Oh, no. I, the, I, I go by the ADA's figures. Yeah, 120. 120 is the max. You know, they consider you to be a diabetic if you're over 120, but if you're 119, they say you're fine, which tells you how stupid these, that's, that tells you how dumb these tests are. You go to the right. doctor and he'll test you and you'll be at 119. He'll go, oh, you're fine. But if you're 120, he'll say, oh, you're diabetic. Here's some medication. Here's some poison right, right. for you to stay on the rest of your life. 119, you're fine. 120, you're not. That's how dumb these tests are. And that's why I'm, I tell people not to waste your money on tests. You be the test. Let your body be a laboratory. Eat a food. See how you feel. Have your uh, yeah, eat, eat sugary foods and see how you feel. If you if you're, have hypo, hypoglycemia, if you eat a bunch of sugary foods and then 20 minutes later you feel like you need a nap, chances are you got some problems with your insulin. Your insulin is, is, is being cranked out too much. You may have insulin resistance. Lay off the insulin spiking foods, sugary foods, and see how you feel. Now let your body be a laboratory. Don't waste your money on tests. Now they got these things called, thank you so much for your call, by the way, Hector. I hope we helped you out. Now we got these, uh, t these physicians and alternative health care practitioners practicing something they call functional medicine. And this is supposed to be a step in the right direction. Maybe it is, but it's certainly not where you need to be. Functional medicine is where they test you for everything. And then they put your figures up against a reference range and they see where you fall into this reference range. If you're in the reference range, they say you're good. If you're low or you're high, they say you need to be medicated or you need to be fixed. It doesn't work that way, people, because these tests are all based on a bell curve. And they assume that most people are going to fall into this bell curve and that's where the normal standard is. But there's no normal people. You could be low, you could be high, you could be high and you could be healthy, you could be low and you could be not healthy. It just doesn't work that way. You've got to see how your particular body responds. Dr. Robert Williams wrote a book uh, many years ago called Bio, uh, Biochemical... Uh, shoot, I forgot the name of it. Biochemical Individuality, where he talks about how everybody's biochemistry is unique. Functional testing and, and regular testing that they do in doctor's offices is a waste of money, in my opinion, a waste of money and a waste of time because we are all biochemically unique. We all have our own biochemical specificity, our own biochemical individuality. Eat a food, see how you feel. If you eat something and you get snotty and you get mucusy and you start sneezing and you get joint problems, you're allergic to that food no matter what a test tells you. And eliminate that food and you're going to feel better. All right. We've got so much to talk about on the bright side. I'm going to tell you tomorrow about uh, about where electricity comes from for this electrical train of health. We'll also, uh, hopefully I'll get to how uh, the Mighty 90 fits into this whole model of the electrical train of health. And then I want to get into some letters and some Facebooks that I've gotten over the past couple of weeks, past month or so. Uh, I've gotten some really interesting notes and I wish I could respond to everybody. And in lieu of that, I'm going to talk about some of these letters I've received in the air and hopefully uh, help not only the letter writers, but help other folks as well maybe dealing with similar issues. All right, if you want to learn more about the Longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com. I'd love to have you on my team. Click on the Join the Team link or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Stay tuned for Alex Jones next on most of these stations. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.